I want to talk today about wind and hurricane damage to our houses and the lessons learned in the design and construction of these houses. Let me give you an example from my experience. About 16 to 18 years ago in the early 2000s, a friend of mine knew I was in the building business, albeit in the commercial sector. He asked me if I would do a framing inspection of his home that was being built in a subdivision just north of the Woodlands, Texas, and the Woodlands is just north of Houston. I agreed, and before I went, I reviewed my code and inspection books for house construction. I went to the subdivision where his house was being built, and I stopped at the contractor's field office as they were building multiple houses in this subdivision. The project manager allowed me access to the house. The house was in the framing stage. It was about 95% complete, and I noticed on the first floor that the framing was incomplete around the fireplace and that there were some interior walls to be put up. On the second floor, I noticed that were, there were no hurricane straps installed from the roof joist to the top plate of the second floor. I went back to the project manager after my inspection and asked him about the deficient incomplete items. He stated that he was in the process of completing the first floor items. However, on the second floor, they were not going to install the hurricane straps. Now, the location of this house on the current maps that I reviewed at the time indicated that the wind load design would be between 90 and 100 miles an hour according to the code book maps. I relayed this information to the project manager. He still stated that they were not going to install these hurricane straps. You see, with these wind load speeds of 90 to 100 miles an hour, hurricane straps are usually designed and installed on these houses. But in this subdivision, they're not within a city or permitting jurisdiction and where a permit inspector would come out to inspect this house. He was in the county, and this county had no permitting inspector. Typically, these framed houses also do not have a structural engineer designing the structure. Now, back in the 80s, we built them off the architectural drawings. We didn't have a structural engineer either. But as these codes evolved, more houses are having the framing portion of the structure designed by a structural engineer. Now, a series of hurricanes influenced the codes in the coastal regions of the United States. In 1970, Hurricane Celia devastated the Texas coast, causing $434 million in damage. This led the Texas Department of Insurance to establish the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, TWIA. You see, insurance companies were not going to insure property along the coast until they addressed and modified the building codes and construction standards. And then in 1992, Hurricane Andrew did $16 billion in damages in South Florida. So home builders, contractors, insurers, along with the state and local governments, reviewed the revised codes. The storm exposed inadequate code standards that were based on old data of flagrant violations that slipped inspections. In 95, officials decided to apply high wind standards of the standard building code, which was used widely in the southeast. Then in the late 90s, three building codes were being used as models nationally, and they merged to form the International Building Code, the IBC. Around that time, the Texas Insurance Association, in conjunction with the IBC, began to look at the design of these houses. And with an onslaught of hurricanes the previous year of 2002, they began to adopt these revised codes of high wind standards. The 2006 IBC and the 2006 International Residential Code, the IRC, contained the requirements adopted to determine a structure's eligibility for windstorm insurance from the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, TWIA. All new construction, additions, and repairs since June 1st, 2008 should comply with these codes. Now, the wind speeds are determined by ASCE 7, the American Society of Civil Engineers, per their wind map. Catastrophe areas, which are the coastal area of Texas, must be designed for a three-second burst of 150 miles an hour. 
beyond the coastline, as the distance from the coastline increases, the wind load standards decrease. The American Wood Council did a webinar on their wood frame construction manual, and they provided us with an analysis of what wind does to our houses. As you see here, the wind direction develops an uplift or suction pressure and a sliding or shear pressure pressure on the foundation. On the top plate example, you'll see that the wind causes uplift forces, a lateral load, and a shear load. And here's an example of the uplift load from the wind. And then the base shearing load or sliding off of the foundation, here's an example. And then the racking of a house from the wind's lateral load. Now from the IBHS's wind tunnel test results, that's the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety, the house on the left was designed and built to the minimum code from the IRC for 90 miles an hour. The house on the right was designed and built for the IBHS's fortified for safer living standards at 40 miles an hour greater or 130 miles per hour. You see the wind speeds in the wind tunnel got up to 120 miles an hour and you see that the house with the minimum design standards on the left had an uplift of the roof between 90 and 100 miles an hour. Now what had happened was the front door has in, had imploded and created a, an internal uplift pressure at the roof. You also see the exterior wall bulging. The house on the right with the higher standards stayed together. So if you're looking to design and build a house, have a structural engineer design the wood framing of your house. They're up to date on all of the codes within your area. The wind loads they use is now based on the ASCE 7 wind load map, which is the American Society of Civil Engineers Chapter 7. They can get their wind loads there, or they can plug in your address in the Applied Technologies Council's website, and it will provide them with the wind speed for your house. Now, according to their website, the house that I inspected had an ASCE 7 wind speed of 98 miles per hour. Now, you see here, I have a structural engineer's design example um, for a commercial project. It was a wood frame structure. It was in the woodlands around 2008. Uh, the structural engineer designed it for 110 miles an hour wind speed, as you see. As you see in this two-story design that, the, that he ties the structure from the roof trusses to the second floor studs, down through the second floor to the first floor, and then to the foundation. To tie this together, he's shown Simpson products at the truss, a HTS-16 at every truss. And it wraps around the top plate to the truss, as you see here. Then he shows an SPH6 on every other stud. This helps from the uplift at the top plate and truss. It ties them together with the stud. And then from the second floor to the first floor, he shows an MSTA49 strong tie strap that is installed on every other stud. At the foundation, he shows an SSTB-14 anchor bolt. He also designs an HDU SDS 2.5 Simpson hold down at about 16 foot apart along the exterior base plate of the structure. As you see here, he has identified that the Simpson hold downs have a 4,565 pounds of uplift capacity with 3,705 pounds of tension capacity and that the anchor bolts have 4,420 pounds of tension capacity. These make up the shear wall that he designed and they help with the lateral and uplift loads. 
So what do we learn from this video? Well, number one, provide structural design on your houses. If you're in a permit jurisdictional area, you'll have to provide a, this design anyways. But if you're outside a permit area, let's say you're in a county, have a structural engineer design the wood frame structure of your house. So he or she should be up to date of all the required codes and the loads for your house. Your insurance carrier may be re require it, so check with them also. Number two, qualify all your design professionals. Check their work. Have them provide load calculations also in, in the, the design. Three, provide a quality control inspector. Maybe the contractor has a quality control program, or maybe you can find an outside source to inspect the construction as it is being built. And four is quality control checklist. They just have the inspector work off of a checklist. Uh, five, provide periodic inspections by the structural engineer. Have him inspect the wood framing before it's covered up. He or she will ensure that your house is being built in accordance with his or her structural design. And six, provide experienced and qualified construction management on all your projects. On my next video, I will discuss quality control for construction projects. So if you want to subscribe, it will notify you when I publish it. I do have a house coming up to construct here in the future in, in East Texas. So I will spend some time on quality control for houses. Thank you.